Hello and good evening to everyone who has tuned in for this webinar or is probably going to watch this in the future. I am Anmol, your host for the day, and today we are going to dip, uh, dig deep into the claims that make the Athena School of Management famous and try to get to know a little more about the Institute and its USPs and whether the claims hold any merit or not. The claim in question is about the multiple internships that Athena School of Management offers. Internships, as they say, are an integral and mandatory part of an MBA curriculum. And while most other B school students have to necessarily go through one internship during their two years. Hello and good evening to everyone. Here is Athena School of Management claiming to provide the students with multiple internship opportunities in the same time frame. We try to figure out why they insist on doing the same and how they go about achieving this and much more during the webinar. Let me quickly introduce you to the panelists for today so that we can move, uh, finally move on to why we are actually here. With me today is Professor Aditya Singh. He's the director of Athena School of Management, the captain of the ship. A professor at heart and in qualification, he also likes to take courses on impact leadership and differential thinking at Athena. He has decades worth of experience backing him across corporate, consulting, academia, and entrepreneurship. Professor Singh has recently been appointed as a member of the prestigious G20 task force. He is the chair of the GBSN Sustainable Finance and ESG Investments Impact Community. He is a member of the India Advisory Council of the Business Graduates Association which is part of the association of AMBS, which is also called the AMBA accreditation. He's also a steering committee member of the AACSB Small Schools Network. And there's more. Professor Singh is a Salzburg Global Fellow in Corporate Governance. He is a Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts in London, Fellow of the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland, Fellow of the Royal Anthropological Institute, uh, a member of the Chatham House, uh, the Royal Institute of International Affairs in London. He has completed uh, the Wharton School Acc Accelerated Development Program, which is a doctoral program at the University of Bath and holds an MBA from the SPJ Institute of Management and Research in Mumbai. So that was a really long list of achievements. I welcome you, Professor Singh. Thank you so much, Anmol. Uh, you know, it's always scary when someone gives you such a great introduction because then you hopefully you can live up to what they have said. So I, I hope to be able to live up to the fantastic introduction which you've given me right now. Thank you so much. Uh, we welcome you, sir. Uh, I also have with me two students at the current PGPM program who can offer insights into the program being conducted by Athena School of Management. I have Ritika Devnani with me and Soumya Mandor with me, who'd like to invite, uh, who I'd like to invite to quickly introduce themselves. Anyone? Hi, Ritika. my name is Ritika Devnani, and I'm currently pursuing my MBA from Athena School of Management. I'm from the 22-24 batch. Uh, I got into Athena by giving my NMAT exams, and I read about it from so many social media sites, newspapers, webinars, YouTube, and I'm very much proud that I got into Athena School of Management. We welcome you. Hi, my name is Samya Mandot, and I'm a student of Athena School of Management from March 2022 to 2024. And I came across Athena, as Ritika rightly said, through everyone. But the thing that attracted me the most is that my like the curriculum, how it is designed and the multiple internships that they offer. So I'm more than glad to be a, a part, part of Athena School of Management. Thank you. We'll get into the nitty gritties of what happens at Athena School of Management very soon. That's why we are here. So with that done, uh, let's move on to uh, why we're actually here and start asking some tough questions to the panelists here, uh, ho hopefully the director as well. Uh, just a reminder for the viewers who have tuned in, uh, you can ask your questions uh, in the live chat box that is beside you. And maybe during the course of the uh, webinar, we can take that up. So before we start uh, with the meat of the session, Professor, I'd like for you to introduce what Athena School of Management does, where, what is it all about, what does it offer, what are, is, are, are its USPs, and why does it matter? Sure, Anmol. So, you know, Athena, by the way, definition is a very exclusive business school. Uh, we've been existing for more than a decade. Uh, and we, we exist for the sole purpose of creating leaders in the corporate world, be it entrepreneurs or be it in, you know, as, as corporate leaders you know, in, in MNCs and companies. Now, you know, where, where are we located? We're located at a place called Hiranand Nani Pawai in Mumbai. Why in Hiranand Nani? Because all the top corporates are located over here. You know, everyone from a JP Morgan Chase to a Credit Suisse to a Nora. The Athena campus is designed like a corporate office, not like a school or a college. So the students actually get that corporate experience, that experiential learning from day one. The faculty who teach at Athena are as entrepreneurs, yeah, you know, or be it in, you know, as, as corporate leaders, like Morgan Stanley, Stack Research and Morningstar. So when they teach you, they don't teach you theory, they teach you dunya dari. 
the class is not about taking notes it's about debates discussions case studies presentations role plays for example today just this morning today we had the india head the managing director of fleshman hellard one of the world's you know, biggest communication firm munawar atari was in class today for two and a half hours talking about something like reputation management which is so contextual in what's happening across the world today right so that's kind of learning which happens at athena now we really believe that in the end each of the students is going to become a decision maker the problem is as i say in hindi duniya badalti rehti hai what is correct today becomes wrong tomorrow because again kind of after tomorrow so that's what we believe in a lot of multiple internships and that's why one of the major differences at athena what we do is our students go for a two month internship in every semester so four months in class learning from the best two months intern at the top corporate by the time you finish your program you already have six to seven months of real world exposure across different verticals across different industries across different teams and in and the kind of strength that gives you the kind of grounding and exposure it gives you that's also very important because you know we get a lot of students who may be freshers so who may not have a context or idea of what they want to actually do in their future careers at the theater the first two internships always generate so you can choose any field you want to build your competency build your awareness and then choose a specialization in the second year of course we like to say we're one of the most global schools in india all our students have an opportunity to go for international internships abroad in the years before covid students were interning in france in germany in in the netherlands our students can go for international exchanges and international immersions for example you know ntu in singapore mcgill in canada leipzig in germany we are the world leader of the called collaborative international learning and i'm that sure that's something which ritika and some will touch on when they talk to you right now our students at as of this moment are collaborating on joint projects with students from switzerland from the uk from greece from poland from romania and you know as they say in english your network is your net worth when your network is global your net worth is truly global but the one thing that we really pride us with athena is that individual attention you know there's a saying in 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 in, in hindi jo dikhta hai wahi bikta hai you know perception and impression has become so important so we focus a lot on the students on that communication skills presentation skills grooming corporate activities you may be the chairman of the irda deputy of the reserve bank of india rithika and somai will share with you about a month and a half back they were at the watch in india summit who were they interacting with with a lady called vinita singh all right from shafting and sugar they i mean they have got photos on insta you can see that also all right with devita sara from view telecom with sanjeev sanyal who is the economic advisor to the prime minister of india Now, when you spend time with these kind of people, imagine the wisdom, the exposure, the experience you get. You go for art appreciation, you go for museum tours. All right. At the same time, we want you to have social conscious. So they are part of the road track club. They do social activities. You are part of the marketing society, the entrepreneurial society. All right. And of course, you go for adventure sports, camp, rock climbing, grappling. The idea is very clear. At the end of two years, when an Athena student walks into a room for a meeting. they should be so confident they should be so impressive the person on the other side of the table should be desperate to listen to what they have to say because if you can do that you won the game right there itself and that's why anmol we are so choosy with the intake we have probably one of the smallest intakes in any major business school in india and you're proud of that fact the idea is at the end of two years i don't want my students to become aditya singh part 2 where is the originality in that where is the individuality each of our students is an individual right they 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 are, they are a ratna they are a jewel we want them to be great individuals so at the end of two years i want ritika or somya to be ritika part 1 or somya part 1 but i do want them to be the best possible version of themselves that's what a key focus area is year one of course you do your common subjects with a deep focus on international business and entrepreneurship second you choose a specialization of either marketing or finance or hr but you choose that in year two Just a small update: We have been ranked in the top 20 non-IIM schools in India by the Academic Insight Magazine this year. We are part of the four major groups of business schools in the world, which are more you know: ACSB, AMBA, EFMD, and GBSN. Barely 120 schools across the world are a part of all four. We are one of those, all right. And this is something which we really proud of as Indians. We are the first Indian business school in history to win the world's most prestigious award of business school it's called the amba excellence award not once but twice we did it for the second time this year and when you go on that stage and you represent a country when you have the imperial business school over there when you have hcc pari over there and you do it for the second time no one has done that from india before 
you know that you're doing something right over there. And that's what the Athena students' focus is. They're very clear. You ask my students. They don't want to be managers. And I'm making a very strong statement over here, Anmol. The Athena student does not want to be a manager. They want to be a leader. They're very clear. 10, 15 years time, I want to be a GM or SVP in a top corporate. Or I want to have my multi-career business of my own. You know, a lot of students are asked, what about the placements? Placements are great, yeah. We're averaging 9 to 12 lakh rupees over here to the maximum of 15 lakhs. Every time they take off Aditya Villa Group, Tata Group, Night Rank, Katar, IMRV, Ipsol, GP, Blah, 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 they all come to us. That's not a big deal for us. But when you really ask an Athena student, what is the kind of job you want? They laugh and they tell you, we don't want jobs. We want to create jobs. We want to get jobs. And I think that encapsulates the Athena philosophy over here. We are not an army. We are not a huge army. We are the special forces. We are a commando team over here. We are the best of the best. And that's what Athenians are. Okay, now I'll stop because I'm a professor, so I can keep going on and on. All right. So I'll, I, I cede the floor back to you. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving the context of what Athena does. Uh, uh, you touched quite a few topics uh, in this introduction. Uh, we'll come to, uh, to all of that. We'll talk about placements. We'll talk about the admission process as well. One thing that I wanted to ask you that jumps out from all the communications that Athena School of Management does and from uh, what you were saying also is the focus on multiple internships. I want to ask you, Professor, first, why do you insist that students go on multiple internships as opposed to other B-School students going on one internship? Anmol, you know, this goes to a deeper philosophy. In fact, two of them. The first is, and if I want to, want to learn a profession, if I don't practice it, how can I do it? If I want to be a pilot, I can learn all the theory on the ground. If I don't fly the damn plane every single day, you know, and how does it work? First, you go with the instructor, right? Then you go solo. Then you go more solo. You have to keep practicing. There's an old idea, practice makes a man perfect. So if in every single profession, be the legal profession, be the medical profession, be it aviation, you need to constantly practice to become certified, to be able to do it on your own. Why is it that in the world of business and management, we feel and that's it. It can never be enough. Why? Because businesses change, situations change, and there is no substitute to experience. Now, India is in a unique place, right? You know, Anmol, in most places in the world, you typically go back and do an MBA after two, three, four years of work experience. India is a place, very, very interestingly, where a lot of students to come, and I think that's a good philosophy, right after graduation. So you don't have that experience. If you don't have that experience, you don't have context. So when I, as a faculty, am teaching you this is what's going to happen in your team and organizational structure, you're clueless. Great in theory, but what's the reality? When I tell you that if you do not communicate and handle your customer segmentation in this particular way, you may actually lose market share. Great on theory. What's the practice? That's what I believe. In the end, there is no substitute to rolling up those cufflinks and those sleeves, getting down and doing it. And then the philosophy is, we believe, why leave it at only one? Because if you ask me, two months in the entire two-year process, and business is supposed to be practical, right? It's not supposed to be a theoretical program as it is. It does not do justice to it. So for us, we, we decided Let's give our students exposure by giving them an internship in every semester. What happens is, classroom where you learn the theory part, right? Then you go and put apply that theory in the real world. You see what actually works and what is what does not work. Once you come back to class in the next semester, you say, hold on. This is what I thought worked. This is not working. Now, how do I address this problem? And you have a very unique context to it. You have a very unique learning to it. So A, one is the professional part of it. But Anwar, it's also about that personal learning. You understand how to handle pressure. You understand how to handle illogical teammates. You understand how to handle time issues. All right. So when you do that now in your multiple internships, by the time you end up going for your final placement and you work in a company where you get that pressure, you know what my students, what the Kina students say? I've done it. Been there, done that. It's normal for me. Imagine being thrown into the into that situation for the first time. We should be having done that three or four times before in different organizations. You're coming out Teflon coated, as they say. And finally, there is also a hidden purpose. 
Anmol, as you know, many companies are changing their hiring and recruiting practices. Increasingly, top corporates are choosing the internship route to deep select prospective hires. As simple as that. They said we talk about PPOs and PPIs, right? And most schools, I will not name them, are very happy. Who student go ek internship is who usko PPO or PPI milta hai. Recently, Athena, we are doing multiple internships. So there are situations where after three internships, an Athena student is holding three PPOs and three PPIs. He is the raja. He is the ran. She is the rani. Then you decide which is the organization you want to join. And that directly reflects when it comes to our placements. With all these, with a lot of schools out there, you know, either even struggling when it comes to February or March in Athena. By January, we are done and dusted with the placements. Why? Because a lot of our students end up getting PPOs and PPIs. They end the process completely. So if you see, it's it's a very thought out process. What is the end goal? The end goal is for me as a business school to give the best possible opportunity to my students to make great careers. The multiple internships are a phenomenal means for them to do that. I see we are receiving questions as well. Maybe we'll take them. So, someone is asking, what is the cutoff score for the MBA program via CAT and NMAT? Uh, and I'll just add to that. What are the exam scores that you accept or for admissions? Okay, so Anmol, we uh, are, you know, and we were discussing this before we started. I am an SPG and alum after all, so that that Kira stays. So we are very profile centric, to be very honest with you. All right. So when it comes to base evaluations, we will look at the NMAT or the CAT or the GMAT, and in case if you give them the GRE and you're from a tech background, we may look at that. We look at these four exams. All right. Now, you know, it is it is very interesting, and again, this is from a SPG and you know philosophy. You may not actually end up having a great NMAT score or a CAT score. You may have a just a two zero five or a two zero six in NMAT, for example, or you may have an eighty percent talent CAT. You can still apply to us because the final evaluation is on profile, and the profile sees one part of course your entrance examination scores, one part of course it sees your past academics. All right, it also evaluates you on the basis of your co curriculars. That's critical for me. I mean. If you want to be a business leader, and if if you never played any sports, and you never part been part of the debate team or any co curricular, that tells me something about you. I won't say good or bad, huh? all right. And at the same time, of course, the most critical thing at Athena is the personal interview. That's the clincher, all right. Because in the end, you know, marks are one thing, but marks are not the mark of a man, right? I, and and I'm very upfront with you on this. I'm not too sure if Dhirubhai or Mani would have got 99 percentile in CAT. All right. I'm not too sure if Mr. Gautamani would have got 275 in NMAT. So you know, it's great these entrance examination scores, but there's far more to you as a person. I want to see who you are today, but far more important, who do you want to be tomorrow, and do you have that hunger, do you have that passion to be there? Because that's what makes mountains move, right? That's what we're all about. Oh, let me come back to my own set of questions now. Uh, we got to know about the intent uh, with the multiple internships approach that you're trying to do. Let's let's try to see how it's manifesting itself. Uh, I want to come to Swamya and Ritika, whichever one of you would like to answer this. How has your experience been with these multiple internships? Uh, I guess I'd like to take that first. Sure. And uh just uh, initially my plan was to specialize in marketing and. Uh, so that is why i decided that i'll mostly go ahead with marketing but one day most like at the most random conversation it could be aditya so just said that why don't you try taking finance and it would be uh, like as simple as a conversation it can be like no no one could ever put me in, across that table and he just said that why just you don't try into finance and then opportunity came in and um I gave interview and I cleared the finance one, and it's very like, it's like okay th- this is working out for me and within a week I started liking my work I was putting more efforts each and every week and I was able to you know uh, get where I wanted to be always and at the end of the internship I changed my 
mind completely that I wish to specialize into finance than marketing. And like my dad is from a finance background. So probably sir thought that maybe I had it in me, but I was just not ready to pursue it. And then it worked out for me really well. And I wish like I will make a career out of finance. And with this decision of mine, I guess Aditya, as proud as Aditya Sir was, my parents were even more happy because they could never convince me for that. So it really helped me. Interesting. All the credit greatly goes to Aditya, so no one else. I'm sure your students are thanking you, Aditya sir. Ritika, you want to pitch in? Yes, so for me, it was like the person I became, I was when I entered into Athena was a very shy girl. But then this was the when Taj came up to me for that internship, that was my first internship, and I cracked it in one interview. And for me, that was like Aditya sir and Athena made me that confident and it was that easy for me to get to do it. And multiple internships for me is we get to know where we actually stand. We get to know what we actually like. So, for example, if I say I like marketing, I like marketing. But then if someday somebody comes and asks me what is marketing, I should know what it is apart from what book knowledge gives me. But practical world is something else. So, what touched or what my first internship taught me was completely very mesmerizing and I'm very proud that I got into Athena, which gives me an opportunity of multiple internships. If I may just add Anmol on this, Soumya did a first internship uh, in the treasury team for Ginger Hotels, if I'm not missing Root Corporation, part of the Indian Hotels. And Ritika did her first internship in the corporate communications team for Indian Hotels. So, so very interesting experiences, I'm sure, for both of them. Totally. I'm sure. Uh, it all sounds uh, good in theory, but I, re- I really want to ask you this. But uh, is there a risk that you that you're exposing students to more that they can chew on? Like there could be a reason that uh, the other B schools are preferring to send the students on one internship. Why do you insist on still sending? You've touched upon it, but I'd like a more elaborate answer on that. I know that's a great question. And number one, I've been very honest. Everything has a risk. There's always an upside, there's always a downside. So if anyone is thinking everything is going to be hunky-dory, it's not. Does this mean that you're pushed to the edge every single semester? Yes. Does this mean that you're being you're, being, you're challenging yourself every single semester? Hell yes. All right. And that is what Athena is about. If you want to be in your comfort zone, if you want to do and go to a business school, you know, Aram Se Betho over there and say, I've done one internship and now it's going to be all theory and I'm going to be great for you. But I want to be very clear on this medium. We are not the right place. Be very clear on that. You do not create leaders. You do not create winners by them being happy with what they have currently. Because you are in a country where 750 million Indians are below the age of 25. Imagine the competition out there. So we are not training our students to be second best. We're training them to be the best. And if you want to be an Olympic level athlete, if you want to play for the Indian cricket team, you are going to have to sweat you are going to have to work much more than all your other friends. And that's what's happening. You can ask any student. Their counterparts in other schools, and that's it's their philosophy, no problem with that, are chilling. Why? Because you have summer break, you have autumn break, you have one internship, you have project Kalana. The Athena students don't have the time for it. They are they're literally, actually always breathless. All right? Because there's so much work happening. But that is what it is all about. Because that's what life is. You do not reach the top by wanting to be comfortable. You reach the top by working harder, by working smarter, and running faster than everyone else around you. And that's what my job as a business school is, to make you the best. If you don't want to be the best, which is great. You want to be have a comfortable, cushy life, great. But to be very honest, Anmol, that Athena is not the right business school for them in the first place. It's very clear. No two ways about it. That makes sense. Uh, more internships for students means more work for you, sir, uh, bringing on more recruiters on board. Uh, how do you ensure that you bring on quality recruiters on board for the multiple internships that you offer? And how do you ensure that the supply meets the demand? 
Well, I think you know, supply never meets demand, if you ask me, because demand is always insatiable. You know, I did my undergraduate economics. I'm an economics scholar. So I can tell you, you know, in an ideal world, supply equals demand. In a real world, supply never equals demand. Uh, that's why we have all we have all the issues which are there. But coming back to the point, it's all about engagement. A, we're located in a prime corporate area for a reason. There's a reason why we're not in the outskirts of Mumbai. We are in the corporate hub because that gives us access by way of geographical proximity. Tomorrow, today, when I talk to a recruiter as a and say, Are, you know, uh, we want you to pick up our students, they ask me, Where are you? Are, I'm, I'm staying in, I'm in Delta, in Nani. They say, Oh, I'm just on the road. I say, Yeah, I know. They say, HS Kariyar, that's perfect for us. Let's catch up our coffee. In fact, I'll come over to your campus. All right. And then you, you do something. You send away your kids to my place because then I don't have to actually work too hard for my business and line. We'll all sit in the conference room and do the interviews. That's actually what is happening. All right. It is, uh, you know, very, very honestly speaking, Anmol, I know a lot of business schools make such a big deal out of getting recruiters. For us, it is, it is so easy. Number one. Number two, the faculty. When your faculty are the guys who are the leaders in the corporate world, getting that interface is very, very easy. Number three. In-depth relationship building, very, very critical. You cannot be transactional. You can't say, sir, mere ko, mere ko internship chahiye, sir, mere ko job chahiye. You have to show them value. And what has happened is, companies which, which we are partners with us, come to us multiple times. Right? Because they see that value add from us. And over the years, the, the engagement for internship has also deepened in different verticals within the company, all right, in different requirements of the company. And finally, there is no shortcut to great networking. The more you network as a business school, the more you network as a business school student, the more value add you get. Of course, having an awesome international advisory board and an awesome industry advisory board also helps. Let me be very honest. Those are great force multipliers because that gives great, 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 uh, uh, you know, value add. And we're lucky to have that also. So as I said, again, you know, it's like that, that old adage, Mahabharat mein, where everyone else tries to aim for the fish and misses and Arjun gets it because he's focused on the eye of the fish. Right? That's how it works. It is single point focus. The entire Athena structure and program is designed to give the maximum corporate exposure to our students. So when you have that focus, everything else falls in place. So you just mentioned... So you just mentioned about the IAB, which is the Industrial Advisory Board, if I'm correct. For the unversed, could you tell us about it a little more? So what happens is, the biggest danger, which we as a school obviously don't face because you're already esconced we are in for all structure in many ways a corporate, right? But a lot of times the biggest thing that business schools face is that they have built this wall of academia, of research, of theory, and you get yourself cut off from what's happening in the real world. In the end, to be very honest, who is our final client as a business school? It is the corporate world. All right. So it's very important for us to have that constant source of corporate interface. When you have that, you get feedback. You get real world information. That's very important. So we have an advisory board in two ways. One is the industrial advisory board, which is more focused on the Indian corporate sector. So for example, you have someone called Richard Singh, who now just has become the CFO of Pernod Ricard. So it was a company, you may have, somebody may have heard of it. All right. Monavar has luckily, I must say, agreed to come on board on the industrial advisory board. Also, we have Srikant Aramamuthan, who was a senior partner in Deloitte in US, for example. So when these are the kind of people, they imagine the kind of inputs they give you, the amount of guidance they give you, and, and maybe to some extent, some kind of help when it comes to understanding how the industry is moving. So that's one part. Along with the industry, the other superpower that we have is we have an absolute who's who international advisory board. And I think nobody has that awesome as us. I'm very open. So when you have Sanida Messi, who is the former deputy prime minister of Albania on your board. You have Matthew Hedges, who is the former British ambassador on your board. All right. You have Greg Crichton, who is the former uh, on the board of directors of AXA and AIA on your board. All right. These are global leaders. When they are on your board, all right, you have Paolo Tatici, who happens to be the deputy dean 
of of the university university UCL in London, and he was at Imperial before that. Right. You have Jordi Diaz, who is the dean of IADA, one of the top business schools in the world in Barcelona. These are people who sit on an international advisory board. Right. So can you imagine the kind of connects, the kind of groups? You talk about future, you know, what's happening in the future trends. We've got Benjamin Butler, who is widely known as one of the world's top futurists on an advisory board. So when he gives inputs to us, imagine what we understand what's happening around the world. That's the axis. Let's be very clear. Knowledge is power. And when you have access to top-notch global knowledge and industrial knowledge, you know the kind of power you get as a student. So how do you build, uh, nurture, and maintain these international relations, relationships that you just mentioned? If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. As simple as that. Because most people can't I... do that. All right, but jokes apart, all right, um, it's because what Athena stands for. Uh, you know, as as you as you mentioned, right? I sit on the India Advisory Board for BGA, which is part of AMBA. All right, um, I I just was uh, yesterday itself. I was the host for the ASCSB Small Schools Network, where we have schools from from India. Very few, to be very honest, on ASCSB, but we have schools from the US, from Europe, etc. It's all about showing value. You know what? We are very happy because a lot of global partners, global advisory boards, are seeing value coming from us. So we actually put out a lot of research, huh? We do a lot of partnerships on ESG, on digital transformation, all right, on blockchain, example, on sustainability, on entrepreneurship. That adds a lot of global value. We have people who teach in top business schools across the world. So, for example, personally, I happen to teach in a program, an executive MBA program run by FDC Brazil and HEC Paris, which are both top ten business schools in the world. IT digital transformation over there personally. Right. So imagine the kind of interface you build. Our students get taught by faculty. For example, someone like David Schmidt, who happens to be the faculty at Wharton, he teaches our students over here. So like a Pauli was at Imperial, at Imperial and UCL, he teaches the students over here. Right. So imagine the exposure you get. I mentioned like today, Munawar was taking a lecture today. In two days hence, on 15th, we have a lady, Professor Joanna Wagner, who will be taking the class. Joanna is a faculty at Essex Business School. Now, Anwar, you know, is one of the top business schools in the world, all right? And she's a global leader in sustainability. She's taking a lecture. Right? The week after that, we have someone, a professor called Marie Helene. Marie Helene is a former brand manager for a small company called Tommy Hilfiger and DKNY in New York. She'll be taking a lecture for her students. So you're understanding the entire puzzle which is coming in, right? It, in many ways, if I may say so, with a lot of humility, perhaps Athena is one of the best kept secrets for business schools around, and it's time we came out of the closet now. Let me quickly come to the students now uh, and bring it all back and to the multiple internships. Uh, I want to know from you, how uh, how is the support from Athena School of Management management been? Would you like to thank Aditya for a little more? Yeah, yeah, because of him. We are getting opportunities because of him and I would truly thank him for how he has turned me into a person. And he has made me so confident about things and about opportunities, taking the opportunities, not being afraid and being like all, all, already being a leader, seeing yourself as a leader. So I would really thank him. Thank you, sir. So what about you? Uh, as Ratika and like, you know, the bad, all, if you ask each and everyone from like our whole batch or even the past students and like future people who are yet to come, all of us will say only one thing that the way Ali uh, Aditya so believes in us and make us believe in ourselves I guess no one even you know there is like uh, no one can do that for you because he makes it so easy and he tries to give like he knows each and everyone in the best way possible because as he said that everyone is different from each other and everyone has a different potential he just knows it where to pinch and that you know that person will like just you have no other option to tell him a no he knows where you have to work hard. He knows that where if you have to take something or not take something, he'll always be there. And he always is like, he's the best mentor that anyone can get. And he also talks about impact leadership. Uh, a lot of these terms actually get thrown around during conversations like peer network right. and, you know, industry connect, case study approach. But right. how much of that has been able to impact your, uh, your own leadership skills and how has Athena helped you in that? 
sure uh, so as uh, even i was uh, really timid i could not communicate so well like my vocabulary is strong but i could not communicate so well earlier because i was timid i had stage fright and all but at athena you get each and every opportunity to build up and work on yourself be it in class or outside class and we get to connect a lot with a lot of people as i said like network is really something which helps you grow and it is no it is not a something that will help you only today it is something that will help you each and every time when you move ahead in your life so that is what we all constantly work on to and whether aditya sir is there around us or not his teachings are always there with us on the very first day he had told like at students at athena we want you know we want our students to be leaders and that was something which stayed in all of our minds throughout and we'll always remember that even when we pass out from athena so it genuinely works so i want to come back to you now uh over a over a period of time every b school uh, you know uh, carves a niche for itself starts getting known for a certain kind of industry or placing its students in certain kind of industries uh, has athena been able to do that or has athena already uh, decided on a, on the carve of the niche that you want to go i know that's a great question and i want to be very honest with you we are very industry agnostic because okay. because of the simple reason the world is changing so fast i mean when i started this journey with athena 10 years back the some of the industries which we thought were doing awesome and you look at them now they're really not doing that great right so i think what's important for us is not to get into labels that's very important not to get into the latest trends for us it is long term value it's quite similar to how a true investor will talk to you about the stock market right you don't you don't do intraday that speculation the the true investor goes into the long term value and in the end that's what the students are doing right? they're investing in their futures so when you look at companies you're looking at companies from two perspectives from growth and from value growth as in how are those organizations growing that's number one but number one, what are their what is their value proposition to all the stakeholders of which the employees which may possibly be athena students is one component but to the customers and to other industry players and what we said very clearly was let us be very clear we want to be aligned to what our values are and for example you know we try to make it a point that if we believe and i'm not going to cast aspersions i think all great company companies are great but a genuine at athena if we believe there's a company which we believe does not have the kind of value system which we're trying to instill in our students then we will not approach the company to partner with us because i then 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 what am i teaching my students in the in the end right so that values is very important and that's what i want to tell everyone who's attending this money comes and goes character stays with you for the rest of your life be very clear on that do never 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 compromise on your values all right for a couple of lakhs here or there trust you me i have seen it all you earn that very easily but once you lose your values once you lose your character once you compromise with your beliefs it never comes back so that's something which we really believe in all our students and i i tell my students very clearly and they will they tell you i tell them don't go after the 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 package that's the silliest thing to do you got 30 40 year long careers yeah it's a marathon don't try to make it a sprint all right look at the profile look at the organization and most of all when you're starting your careers look at how much you can learn in that organization because if you can do that the rest of it is going to be all easy i'm sure the audience is loving this lesson on impact leadership as well uh, another important aspect that runs parallel to the international partnerships you were talking uh, about are the international immersion programs i want to ask you do you have immersion programs at athena we've got them coming out of every single place you can ask about uh, we do it in three ways first of course is you can go for international internships right and 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 i think that's something which we're very proud of to give us one the global exposure that's number one imagine for example just for example and i'm going to pre code was things have changed a bit after covid as you know but we are hoping to get them back into the thing i am a student and i want to get global exposure so you know i apply to athena in the international internship program and you end up going to germany or you go to italy so you go to for a place like tuscany for example all right or you end up going to 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 germany in baden or you go to holland 
And where do you go to in Holland? You go to Rotterdam. And where do you enter? You enter a cutting edge company in artificial intelligence or environmental technology. So there's a company, for example, called Ran Marine, which it uses drones to clean the ocean. You enter that kind of company or a digital media company. You stay there for two months, work in that kind of an organization, see the entire buzz, get the exposure. Okay. The second way is when you go, you choose to go for international immersion or an international exchange. So all our students have an opportunity. They can go to international immersions for our partner schools. For example, we have one with NTU, Landing University in Singapore, all right, which is an industrial four and digital. You can go, for example, to the Babson University, Babson College in the US on entrepreneurship. You can go to the McGill University, one of the top universities in the world in Canada on, on digital, on entrepreneurship, on AI, right? And so these are the kind of immersions which you can go for. And the students do choose to work for that. The third option you can go for international exchanges, where you go for a semester exchange, for example. So we have with several schools, for example, for example, you have an HHL Leipzig in Germany, where you go for a semester. That's also good. But what unmold we truly excel, and you know, I my students will agree with you on this. We are the world leaders in what we call collaborative international learning. What happens in that is our Athena students collaborate with their peer students from top business schools and universities across the world. And they work on joint projects. So, for example, as I speak to you right now, they are collaborating with the Bucharest Business School in Romania, with the Athens University in Greece, with the Liverpool Business School in the UK, FHNW in Switzerland, Rockla University in Poland. What happens? I'll briefly show you. So you make six, seven men, member teams. Each member, for example, will have three people from, from Liverpool and four from Athena, something like that. And then they work on specific projects, on digital transformation, on sustainable finance, on entrepreneurship, right? And then they work together over a period of one or two months, and then they present their projects on, on a competitive basis. Can you imagine, Anmol, the kind of learning you're creating? You're actually learning right now itself how to work on cross-functional, cross-cultural, cross-border teams, multiple countries across the world. How do you work in different time zones, different languages, different speeds? That's something which is very, very important. All right, that's number one. The second part of course to that is it's gone so well that now those international partner students have started coming to Athena to meet their partner students over here. So for example, we have students who come to us from France, all right? This April, and I was just talking to Vitika today itself on it, we are hosting a delegation from FHNW in Switzerland. Where they're going to come to India and we're going to host them at Athena, about 25 of them, to so understand India as a culture and the economic opportunities. As I said before, your network is your net worth. When your network is global, your net worth is truly global. Awesome. I want to talk about entrepreneurship now. As you rightly said, your network is your net worth. And as an entrepreneur, uh, you yourself, uh, net, your net, uh, network building is something that you really want to do. How supportive I, is the structure at the Athena School of Management for students to help them in their entrepreneurial endeavors? I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, how 50 to 60 percent of Athena students will have started an entrepreneurship venture in some way or the other, even while they're studying at Athena or within a couple of years of leaving Athena. Don't ask me success rate because that's not fair for me to comment on being an entrepreneur, but they do that. I'll give you another example of this. We're talking about international projects, all right? Students who did the international project last year, one of the projects in Greece, all right, in the medical care. They're actually going now to get VC funding. The Athena student and the Greek partnership student in the medical field. Right? Another venture which was in wine in Romania, where the Athena student supported, is now moved to Series A funding. Right? Another one is planning to do that. So what I'm going to tell you is it is something in the DNA. Why? Because you have to understand being an entrepreneur is not only about starting your own company. Today, when you go to the corporate world, there are philosophy called entrepreneurs, right? Intrapreneurs, all right. Corporates also want someone who works with them like an entrepreneur who can take projects, create wonderful things. And that's the philosophy you want with our students. You go to the corporate sector or you do your own business, you have to be entrepreneurial in your approach. It's something which is very core to us. Therefore, in your first year, your core focus is on two things one is on international business, and the other is on entrepreneurship development. It's a core focus for us in year one for all of us. 
are there uh, incubation centers at athena or uh, maybe what other societies or clubs are there so of course we have, we have an entrepreneurship society we have an international society we have a marketing society we have a finance society we have a sports com we have the road track club we are now starting a luxury and branding society very very soon that's one part of it the other part of it is because of a deep industry connect when it comes to entrepreneurship athena does not need an incubation center athena itself is the dam incubation center let me put it to you this way all right and it's a global incubation center today athena students partner we with partners across the world and that is something to be incredibly proud of again over here so i understand a lot of business schools do a lot of oh we have this incubation center where you can think differently where the normal rules of a business school don't apply it should be in that business school the dam incubation center yeah. all right you come here thinking differently as it is so that's how we, our philosophy is let me ask this to the students then uh, what clubs and societies are you part, you guys part of like how does your day at athena look like very productive not and this mix of activities studies practical knowledge case studies as we, like you know how athena goes about it and uh, uh, we have the track club and the president for the road track club and the secretary for the marketing society we have a cultural team so for all the festivals we keep coming up with things activities we go for turf we go for sports we go for treks so yeah you when you when you get up in the morning there is no sadness of getting up and going to college it is like wow we are going to athena so we have that motivation every day and on saturdays and sundays you are like why there is no college we need to get back what what you told me it's the same for me at athena it's like never a dull moment like the throughout i guess the journey throughout so far and as the bat size is like niche uh, everyone's like a family to each other be the students be the faculties anyone at athena if you talk to and like if you need any help they'll be there if you want something they'll be there and it's like working in the societies be at monitoring events or organizing or implementing anything basically it's just everyone's there so you know uh, together it's like united we stand and like divided we fall so so I implemented that also and everyone like everyone does it so it's really nice a journey for all of us and i'm sure that the juniors who are yet to come i'm sure they'll have a wonderful time because we are great seniors for sure so that is something we all are looking forward to i'm sure it's not all work and uh, and grind and you do also have some fun tell me something some some trivia some tidbit that uh, about athena school of management that only the students would know not even professor that they would know I guess it's like as a source said that you know like you have to grind but in the end it's for the greater good because it will lead to success and it would be like it would be a story of each and every individual everyone would have their own struggles be it professionally or personally or at financial levels but everyone will grow at the end of the two years of the program and in the end that is what is going to make you different from each and everyone at Athena beyond Athena and like we you can be become a global leader you can become an entrepreneur whatever you want to become a good businessman or businesswoman and the best part is each and everyone will get that opportunity it won't be gender bias it won't be like depending on how you earn or what you don't earn it would be individual of how you are made of nothing else so that's the best part thank you so something that aditya sir doesn't know about and for the students who are coming to athena they will not come to know that they athena is already a second home for them they will leave a piece of their heart at athena and it's going to be the biggest life turning experience for them as you also as you said we do activities for every festivals as i said it is a second home we do, all the festivals are celebrated at a second home first and then at our respective places so that's how we go about from something that professor aditya would not know maybe uh, to something that professor professor aditya would definitely know let's talk about placement now sir 
uh, because that is what it all boils down to. Can you give us a brief overview about the placement statistics this year or last year maybe? What is the placement process like? How do you get recruited? The three placements are done and dusted over with. Technically, the program finishes in June and most of the people already started working. Only those of structured empty programs will be joining in maybe in a couple of months. But otherwise, everybody essentially at Athena starts working on a soft working from January, February itself. Everybody is working average is 9 to 12 lakh rupees, maximum is 15 lakh rupees. Uh, you know, uh, normally we say that 100% placement kabhi bolna nahi chahiye, 96% hota hai. But this year, hey, 100% ho gaya hai, yaar. I mean, so it's done and it's over. So, we, I mean, my place to, placement team is already for the past uh, one and a half months putting up their feet up in the air and relaxing and enjoying life because they have it easy. And you know, Anmol, it's not, it's not a great year for placements overall. There is a downturn in the market. We all know that tech hiring has frozen. But uh, we were just lucky, I guess, that that because of our goodwill and because obviously of the ability that we know about our students, they're awesome, all right? They've been able to do it. So we're done and dusted. We are over with it. I mean, I, I don't even need... I'll be very honest with you, and I'm saying this with a lot of humility. Today afternoon, uh, somehow someone got my direct number who is doing campus recruitments for one of the largest conglomerates in India, the FMC, FMCG division. And he said, and he was, and he, he's at a very senior level. And he again is from a top business school. He said, yeah, Aditya, I mean, what the hell, we've sent you the, the JD and your team hasn't even responded with a, with a single profile. What's up? And I said, I'm so sorry. And I'm genuinely sorry. And the fact of the matter is, we don't have anyone left to send it to. Right? And I'm talking to anyone, it's a top three company of India, conglomerate, all right? I will not in the name, it's not fair. But the problem is we have a genuine problem. The problem is we still have JDs coming in, but I don't have anyone because every person. It's not a bad problem, trust you me. All right. But that's where we are. So for us, this entire journey placements is really not a big deal. And, and honestly, I really don't know why people make it such a big deal. This is India, yeah. I mean, there are enough opportunities if you're good. As simple as that. All I can think about is what is that company? I'm, I mean, you're sure I'm just saying it's the top three FMPG company. I think we can sort of make a guess. Yeah, public forum, I don't even sue them all. Okay, okay. Well, what, what are these roles? What kind of roles uh, do students find themselves? Research analyst, branding, corporate communications, treasury, uh, fin ops, um, you know, uh, capital market ops, talent acquisition, HR, BP, OD, pretty much every damn thing under the sun. Again, I said, we are very clear on them. I do not want to restrict my students, all right? So, for example, I have a student in the previous man who is working with a luxury company, all right, uh, which typically only works on transactions, per ticket transaction of 50 lakhs to one and a half crores, all right? This company deals in the highest possible value when it comes to interior designers. So you can imagine the Gauri Khans and the Krinkle Khanas, they work with them. All right? I can't name the company because you know, it's confidential, but she's working with them. All right. And uh, it's a it's a pure luxury product. So what is her typical day? Uh, a dinner party at uh, a dinner party at the French ambassador, French consular's house, the French ambassador's house. Why? Because the French ambassador is inviting this company and inviting all the other the luxury you know, Soho and movie stars, and she's got to be there and you know, snooze with them and network with them to make sure that the transaction deals happen. Not a bad life, if you ask me. All right. So that's what Athena is. We will come out with such unique, interesting positions, which, which a normal business school will not even think possible. But then that's because we think differently as it is. And, you know, I'm a professor also of differential thinking. So that's what we do for a living. That makes it tempting for the for our viewers to. Look to come to Athena School of Management. Let's talk about placements in, on that note then. Uh, how does one find themselves to be a part of your cohort? Like, what is the admission process like? Uh, what are the rounds? How do you interview candidates? And what are you looking for? So, round one is done and dusted way back. That was the EDC edition round. That's over. Round two is over. We're now in round three. All right. Of course, the later rounds you apply, the more tougher it is. I'll be very honest. With you. There are no two ways about it. Okay, so what they need to do is AP if they interested is apply to Athena number one. If they go to a landing page, apply and people get in touch with you. And you fill up your application form, the team will come back to you. We are doing now interviews in round three on a rolling basis. 
or else everything appears personalized including the selection process we do not do group discussions we hate group discussions cause group discussions and anmol you've been through them i'm sure means the person who shouts out the loudest always gets heard and that's not what leadership is all about so our process is very personalized all right we will be doing personal interviews with you we will evaluate you on the basis of that like i said before nmat ya cat ya gmat ya gre score honi chahiye profile achhi honi chahiye we will do an interaction with you oh very important and this is something which rithika and sonal will tell you athena is possibly the only business school where it is compulsory to involve your family in the interview process rithika and sonal will tell you if your parents do not sit with you in the interview process we don't interview you as simple as that now people may ask me why i am adult i said bhaiya tum adult ho ki tum baby ho tum jo bhi india mein ho tumhare future mein teen hissedar hone wale hain tum as a student your family as a support system and us as an institution we all have to be aligned so that's very important for us and i think that's work for the you know that's when alignment comes and that's how we for our for our parents they love us because we're an extension of the family in that way so once that evaluation happens if we like you we'll make an offer of admission to you if we really like you we may also offer you scholarship worth a couple of lakh rupees but please note a lot of scholarships have got over in round 1 and round 2 so we really have a handful of left so it is really down to a first come first serve basis no we do not behave like some business school and give you 80% scholarship so don't expect that from us please nahi hota hai wo give me khud main bata raha hu all right here we give you scholarships which you deserve as simple as that and as you probably see anmol we are very honest we are very transparent as a school jo hai wo hai jo nahi hai wo nahi hai as simple as that and we expect that from our students also it makes sense sir uh we are almost uh, touching an hour with this session uh like to bring this session to a close any parting thoughts that you have sir that you want to leave the viewers with All I will tell each one of you is: you are an individual. You have your own strengths. You have your own weakness. All right. Stop being a bloody copycat. Very honestly, and I'm using the B word over here. It's, it's a nice B word. It's not too bad. All right. Okay. Don't be a bloody copycat. Follow your own path. Follow your own destiny. And don't be in this journey to be loved and liked by everyone. If people like you, they will like you for who you are. If people accept you, they will accept you for who you are. And if they don't, then they don't matter. And remember, the leader is that person who walks on the path which no one else has walked on. And if no one else has walked on that path, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult, but it's going to be exciting. So follow that exciting journey. And if you want to be on that path, come and have a conversation with us. We're always open to a conversation. Cheers. Swami and Ritika, you want to pitch in? Say something to your junior. So, uh, so like uh, so far, almost we are going to uh, get done with our second semester, and it's been a great journey, as I said. And every day, each and every day, at Athena, without Athena, is a lesson for all of us, and it's going to shape us into better individuals. And as so I said, that in the end, we are on our own. Like there's uh, a timeline till our parents will support you will uh, there's a time until our uh, faculties and you know director would be there but in the end five years down the line we are going to be on our own and the only thing that will value is the principles which we take from our elders which is our parents and our faculties and our teachers so for sure because i'm sure that each and every person at athena will agree there are certain things which our parents could not do it for us but so did it and it might look that so is not the friendliest person it might look that as a first instance but it is not so please juniors you don't have to worry about it all he is the most friendliest person you will ever meet and it is very easy to strike a conversation with him be it at any level so i'm sure you would not regret if you have any second thoughts feel free to reach us anyone from athena or like you can reach out to your seniors us and all of us are there for you and we will always be there for you thank you so much i will only say that if they if my juniors if they are getting a chance to get into athena 
So please get in. There is no better place than Athena. That is for sure. And it is going to be a wonderful experience for them. A great learning. And of course, Aditya sir is there to make everyone a better person, a better leader. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, with that, we've come to the end of the session. Uh, it was lovely having Professor Singh, Ritika, and Soumya on Inside Ang. Thank you for your time, viewers. I, ho I hope our audiences found value in this session and got the answers to the questions they had. If you joined late in case uh, or you forgot to cover your questions, feel free to leave a comment and we'll send it over to our panelists for the response. Do tell us in the comment section what are the videos and webinars you want us to come with and we'll try to make them happen. Uh, I thank you once again, panelists uh, from Athena School of Management for taking out time out for the session. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank God, you. God bless all of you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. for taking out time out for the session. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. God bless all of you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.